have some chocolate and vanilla fragrance samples from Mason to Heat. I just wanted to go ahead and review those today. Besties, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jada if you're new here. I have some chocolate and vanilla fragrance samples from Mason to Heat. I bought a sampler kit from Lucky Scent a while ago, so I just wanted to go ahead and review those today. Now, if you see me looking down, I did take some notes, so let's get right into the video. So the reason I really like Mason to Heat is the bottles are pretty affordable for a niche fragrance. They're around $120 or so and you get 100 ml which I think is really nice. They're also really nice quality and they smell really good. So the first fragrance I'm going to be talking about is Cacao in the Sun. This was launched in 2022. Now this is a very light fruity fragrance um, there's definitely a floral component to it it's just very like sweet I'm getting strawberries if you do get the chocolate which I don't on the tester strip and I did on my skin if you do happen to smell the chocolate it is so nicely done like this chocolate was executed in such a beautiful way and it blends in really perfectly with the rest of the fragrance keep in mind this chocolate or this cacao is very much in the background so you are getting a lot more fruitiness a lot more muskiness a lot more floral you're definitely getting a lot more of a floral vibe and then this also has a woodiness and depth about it as well i think this fragrance was blended really well it's pretty complex so i'm gonna read off the notes so the notes in this fragrance are rose lemon currant strawberry with mid notes of chocolate iris orange flower lily of the valley with base notes of vanilla sandalwood woody accord and musk i wrote that there's something very fresh feeling about this and it's good for someone that wants to experiment with chocolate for me this was really fun to experience but i am a chocolate lover i love my chocolate fragrances to be very chocolatey um this is more fruity floral in my opinion so it's definitely good for people just dipping their toe into chocolate fragrances very very beautiful fragrance but something i probably won't add to my collection but i will definitely enjoy wearing the sample but these fragrances i am not doing in any particular order i was going to do them chronologically from the first launch to the more recent fragrances but it didn't work out that way so i think um, it's going to be more so chocolate vanilla chocolate ch vanilla chocolate vanilla as i am reviewing these fragrances so next up i have salvini it was launched in 2020. Ooh, I really, really like this one. It's a very salty marine kind of vanilla. I think this is very clean and fresh smelling and it was done so nicely. There's also an aromatic quality about this. I'm definitely getting sage in here. So the notes on this one are top notes of sage, mid notes of sea notes, water notes, and jasmine with base notes of vanilla and cedar. So I definitely think that this is a underrated gem for sure. And this is actually something that I would want to explore a little bit further. This is something that I wish I would have pulled out and sampled during the summer. But I do live in Florida, so I still have the opportunity to explore it. Sun's not going anywhere, maybe besides behind the clouds, because it's pretty rainy here, but it's still pretty warm the majority of the time. I definitely want to test this one a little bit further. I think that this one's really nice, and there's a possibility that I I may add this to my collection. I just don't know exactly if it's a like or a love yet, but I do think it is a really, really nice, affordable, marine, aromatic, fresh vanilla. Very, very interesting, very beautiful, and very unisex in my opinion. I think a lot of these are going to be unisex. Yeah, this is really nice. So the next fragrance that I'm going to be talking about is Cacao Libertine, and this was launched in 2021. So this one actually reminds me of another fragrance that I have. It's called Cafe Tuberosa by Atelier Colognes, but Atelier Colognes is not easily accessible in the U.S., so I feel like this is a really good affordable and easily accessible alternative as per a niche fragrance. And... This one is essentially the same kind of vibe, but you're not getting coffee. 
in the opening and I feel like this one's a lot more smoothly blended and I also feel like it is a tad bit sweeter. So the notes are essentially the same on this fragrance as it is Cafe Tuberosa, but instead of the coffee, so you're gonna take the coffee out and then you're going to add some caramel and benzoin in the base. So this is definitely a more mass appealing version of that fragrance without coffee, if that was something you were ever interested in. So the notes on this, basically like I said before, they're the same as Cafe Tuberosa, but if you're not familiar with that, um, the top notes are bergamot, mandarin orange, mid notes of cardamom, rose, tuberose, with base notes of cacao, patchouli, vanilla, and caramel. So to my nose, the most prominent notes are definitely going to be the cacao, the tuberose, and the patchouli. With that spiced kick of cardamom for sure, um, you're definitely going to get a warm spiciness about this fragrance. So I think that the tuberose, and also for me, I want to say I do struggle with tuberose sometimes. Um, sometimes it could just be too much and just come off really irritating to me. I have to say the tuberose in here is done really, really nicely. If I didn't have Cafe Tuberosa, I would probably opt for this fragrance. And honestly, I do think that this one's a little bit more, more mass appealing and possibly even leaning a little bit more feminine than Cafe Tuberosa does. But I do like that coffee note, so that is probably something I'd have to revisit when I finish up my bottle if I'm unable to find another, but this is a really, really nice fragrance. Definitely something to check out if you like that kind of vibe. This is a very underrated fragrance in my opinion. I wish more people would talk about it because it's actually really nice. With this next one, I am calling all my Damo Bianca lovers. This is called Floranilla and it was launched in 2020. So if you are wearing Damo Bianca really, really heavy this summer and spring and you want a more fall, winter appropriate version I would definitely have to say this is a really good option so instantly you do get a Dama Bianca kind of vibe but it has a depth to it a warmth to it a woodiness to it and it also is balsamic and kind of thick in a way it is much sweeter in my opinion where Dama Bianca has much of a fresher more uplifting kind of feeling this is like a, a sweet powdery purple floral vanilla uh, is that is thick balsamic ambery and really nice very feminine this one is more feminine in my opinion and the thing that i find the thing that i also find really interesting about this fragrance is it does have a burst of fruitiness with tangerine in the opening which i think is really beautiful and the dry down is ambery woody and more darker so the top notes on this are violet heliotrope italian tangerine mid notes of vanilla absolute and orris and then base notes of myrrh and vetiver and this vetiver is more of like the earthy kind of vetiver just something to take into consideration i like it but it is something that i am not completely sold on this is something that i would have to test more just for my own personal taste um this is something that I would suggest sampling if you like Dama Bianca. And yeah, it's just a really pretty, feminine, sweet, beautiful, thick, kind of woody fragrance. And I really like it. I think it's a nice fragrance. Like, guys, when I'm telling you this brand is underrated, I so mean it. Next, we have Cacao 2. And I think this fragrance is a little bit more masculine. There's definitely an animalic quality to it, but I think the opening, you're definitely getting a huge dose of cacao. This is very like, I wanna say it's like more aggressive and it's very spiced and it's rich, it's deep, it's animalic, like I said before, and it's very woody, ambery, and just warm feeling overall. This is definitely like a winter kind of fragrance, um, or if you experience really chilly autumns wherever you live, I think this would be perfect for that kind of situation. I would have to say this is unisex, but it definitely leans a lot more masculine. So if you're a guy and you're looking for a cacao kind of fragrance, I definitely would say try this out. It may not be everyone's cup of tea because it does have that animalic quality about it. But if you do like chocolate and you do like animalic kind of fragrances, this might be something that you would be open to trying. I think it's interesting and I think it's 
addicting to sniff but i'm not exactly sure if me personally i would be comfortable wearing it but that's just because this isn't like exactly my kind of fragrance um, and I feel like this is one that you have to be like a specific kind of person to pull off. I feel like this would be much harder to pull off. Um, you have to have an edgy vibe to you. And I, I just feel like a really specific person has to be able to pull this off. And this is something to sample for sure. Definitely not blind buy safe. So this has top notes of cinnamon, middle notes of lambdana, base notes of cacao, cedar, benzoin, vanilla, amber, and vetiver. So... I think it's different and I think it's really interesting and I also want to stress that this is a little bit powdery as well um, overall it's just a very different fragrance um, I really like the fact that within this brand there's something for everybody they're all like chocolate and vanilla but they just take it in totally different directions and I really appreciate that but yeah this is a really interesting fragrance like I cannot stop smelling it right now and I feel like I would really enjoy smelling this on a man but yeah, I just could not, I don't think I could see myself wearing it. I don't know, I'm just picturing somebody in like a leather jacket or somebody who wears like all black or somebody that just has like a little bit of edge to them but then is like also a teddy bear on the inside. Like those are the vibes it's giving me. Yeah, this is, this is good. I like it. I like it a lot but not for me. Ooh, okay, so I really like this one. So next I want to talk about Vanilla 2. Now, this is just like a really nice vanilla. Like just overall a really sweet vanilla. This is what you are expecting when somebody says vanilla. So I think it's pretty like basic. It's powdery, it's sweet, and it's just like very gourmand. But oddly enough, I think it is like very a very very powdery vanilla so you're not gonna get like a vanilla extract or anything like that out of this you're going to get like a finely milled vanilla powder kind of vibe out of this and it does smell pretty synthetic so it's very light wearing it's really sweet the notes on this are top notes of vanilla flower mid notes of vanilla praline notes powdery notes and base notes of vanilla and benzoin resinoid so you're really just essentially getting vanilla in different forms um, of vanilla smelling resin and powdery notes and essentially that's how i can describe it it is very sweet it is very powdery and it is very vanilla it's basic but it smells good it's sweet and it's balsamic and it's a little bit ambery so i had to go back and forth with myself so i think this is really nice and if someone gifted it to me i think i would definitely wear it um but i feel like there's a lot of really really nicely done vanillas on the market i'm not exactly sure if i would invest into this one and that's just because it's not a love like it is a really strong like like i said if somebody gifted this bottle to me i would be more than happy i would wear it and i would enjoy it it's nice i just don't think it's a full bottle worthy fragrance for me but it, it is really nice to smell as you can see i have not taken this tester strip away from my nose like it is really a nice intoxicating vanilla especially for somebody looking for a very basic vanilla this is really nice i'll be stepping a little bit of out of order here um, for these last two i'm going to have them switched vanilla again and then a chocolate fragrance so uh, next we're going to talk about vanilla so this is actually one that really impressed me um i found myself he like I kept coming back to this one just because I did find it really interesting so it's like a citrus freshness in the opening it's powdery and it's a bright vanilla it's a bright happy uplifting vanilla um, it's definitely powdery for sure I feel like the patchouli is very much present in this fragrance but it doesn't take over it doesn't make it unpleasant or overpowering um, especially if you struggle with patchouli i don't think that this would be something that would really bother you too too much or really at all so i feel like when it's bright and uplifting and just very powdery and light feeling in the beginning. I feel like it does start to go thicker and I noticed that when I was wear testing it. Um, and I feel like this would be really nice to wear in the fall. Like this one is really, really nice. This one I could actually see myself potentially getting a full bottle of or at least a larger decant. This one's really, really pretty. 
So it has top notes of citrus peel, almond flour, coconut flour, mid notes of vanilla flour and vanilla with base notes of patchouli, benzoin, resinoid, vanilla, and musk. So I like the balance of the vanilla, the florals, and the citrus in here. Just really the warmth of it all. I think this is a really interesting fragrance. I think it's really, really pretty. I really did not expect myself to a, to appreciate a powdery, citrusy, yet thick and sweet kind of vanilla. Um, this is actually not typically the scent profile that I go, to, go for. I honestly think it is the almond flower that is really drawing me in here. Um, the fact that it is so powdery and bright and uplifting. This is a really nice fragrance. I definitely feel like I'd have to test it out some more. I can't for certain say if I do see a full bottle of this in my future, but this is really, really pretty. This is really, really nice, guys. This is definitely probably one of my favorites out of all the fragrances that I have talked about in this video. I changed the order of the last two fragrances because this is the only one that I have a full bottle of currently after sampling these fragrances. Um, I sampled these for the first time last year and then again this year pretty recently to make this video. But last year I just blew through the, uh, I just blew through the sample in a matter of days so I had to get this fragrance. So this fragrance, first of all guys, I really like the bottles and this is how it sprays if you're curious. It's a really like fine mist, which is really, really nice. The cap and the bottle, they feel great. Um, yeah, just in case you were curious as to how they look. So this one is called Vicious Cacao. It was launched in 2021. And this one is just like a boozy, sweet, fruity, warm, spicy kind of fragrance. Um, and it's woody and it's salty and it's just, it's giving everything that I personally would prefer in a chocolate fragrance. There is a hint of fruitiness, there's raspberry in here. Um, but yeah, it's just salty, salty, fruity, woody, boozy. Like this is giving fall and winter realness and I really, really like this fragrance. So um, this, one's, this one's really yummy in my opinion. So this has top notes of rum, raspberry, pink pepper, middle notes of cacao, amber, jasmine, and narcissus, with base notes of caramel, benzoin, sandalwood, saffron, salt, and oak musk. So yeah, I just have to say the cacao in here is super yummy, super well blended. Um, overall, this is, this is by far my favorite my favorite of the lot and I do like the fact that it is like salty sweet boozy woody like I just love the way everything comes together this is like my kind of fragrance guys this, is, this was just a winner for me from the second I smelt it and I just think this is really really amazing so if you do like cacao or chocolate fragrances and you want something boozy and sexy and delicious smelling I definitely would opt for vicious cacao it's a really nicely blended fragrance it smells phenomenal and yeah I have so many good things like it's it's just a really nice fragrance I really enjoy it those were all of the fragrances I sampled it came in a pack of eight um, I actually had a lot of fun exploring Mason to heat a little bit more I know there's so many other fragrances and there's even more chocolate and vanilla fragrances but that's just what came in the pack I definitely could see myself exploring this brand a little bit more I had a lot of fun and I think that there's something in here for everybody um, despite a lot of them being gourmand or gourmand in a way. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I had a lot of fun making it. Um, and I also wanted to know if there's any that stood out to you or any that you have or know that you love. I want to hear your thoughts because I don't think there was any of them that I thought were like bad per se. Um, there's ones that I thought were less great or not as good, but there's none that I thought were bad and wouldn't wear. Um, maybe except for the cacao too, but that's more so because I thought it was like more masculine. I just don't think I could pull it off. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I appreciate you guys always. I hope you guys are having an amazing day or night, wherever you are. I appreciate your continued support and oh, oh my God. Okay. Thank you guys so much for everything. Mwah. Bye. Love you.